Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Um, and it's great to see you once again. And I'm here for you uh, to um, help you uh, understand any uh, clarifications, doubts um, regarding the text that we read uh, for this course. Um, I'm also happy to discuss uh, any uh, issues uh, or concerns or uh, thematic aspects of the uh, stories that we um, read uh, for um, this course on short fiction in Indian literature. So um, I, I got a, a very interesting question from one of the uh, registered um, students for this course. And the question was um, this. Um, the, the student asked me, how important is uh, a close analysis of um, plot and uh, structure of a short fiction is to understanding the theme of that particular um, story. So uh, why should we care about uh, plot and the way the story is written? So that was the question. Uh, my um, approach to uh, a closer look at a plot and um, the way it is um, kind of played out um, in the form of words and, and, and sentences and paragraphs um, is this. I mean, this is the only way uh, by which we understand um, that particular story world. Uh, the, that story world is uh, described to us in a particular manner. Um, and, and, and that manner is important, uh, I believe, in, in understanding um, the major concerns of the uh, story. And um, if, if we go back to uh, Kushwan Singh's um, story of karma, uh, it's, it's kind of neatly built up. Uh, um, it, it begins uh, almost, um, um, you know, uh, with a perfect introduction with, with a husband, with a barrister, um, you know, uh, in, a, in a first class waiting room, and then uh, the story gradually develops. So um, immediately, uh, we can ask these questions. If, if, there, if it's a husband and wife couple traveling, why is this man all by himself? Uh, in a first class waiting room, where is his wife? And and we know that the wife is uh, just outside the uh, waiting uh, room. So um, the way um, it is shown to us, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, narrator doesn't tell you way off uh, or right off the bat that the wife is sitting outside. We gradually come to uh, see that um, there are disparities between the uh, the couple and 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 that uh, also complicates the way the story is um, resolved at, at the end of the um, uh, at the end of that particular piece of narrative so uh, plotting the way uh, the story is told is is very very important to understanding some of the uh, concerns the thematic concerns of that particular fiction. And and um, it, it it's also very um, uh, interesting to see how that particular story world is painted, um, painted by the author figure. And uh, in in this regard, it's very interesting to go back to Mulkraj Anand's um, The Prize of uh, Bananas. And uh, some students, uh, when I taught this course um, in a, in an MA program, they asked me why that uh, lengthy introduction, which doesn't seem to have uh, any impact on um, the rest of the story. And for them, the rest of the story begins with that moment in the uh, train station when um, you know a monkey snatches um, the loincloth of a pious Hindu and then there are other um, other moments uh, when monkeys intervene in the in the story so uh, why that lengthy description about um, you know the past the mythical past um, uh, that the uh, information from the epic uh, has been introduced by Mulkraj Anand so that question keeps coming up so once again we see that stories are not told in a straightforward manner. There's a beginning, there's a mi middle, and then there's an end. Um, stories are presented to us from uh, various angles, and um, and it is those angles which kind of uh, bring the 
deeper ideological uh, significances of, of a particular fiction uh, to the uh, uh, readers. Um, and in the case of Milkraj Anand's The Price of Bananas, uh, we can uh, sense that, um, that the, the interesting notion that monkeys, uh, which have a connection, a traditional connection, a historic connection, a religious connection to um, Lord Rama of, of this um, epic, um, the Ramayana, they instinctively know how to uh, sense evil and how to deal with evil. So that particular motif is um, set up uh, by that lengthy introduction, which apparently doesn't seem to have uh, any kind of uh, connection to the rest of the way the plot, um, the story plays out. So, um, and I want to kind of remind the students about the difference between uh, um, plotting and uh, the difference between plotting and story. Uh, in, in plotting, we pay attention to the connection between the scenes. Um, so uh, that's very, very important. So why and how and in what way are the scenes um, connected, um, you know, and, and what is the significance of the connection? So we need to see the importance of the introductory uh, narrative, the connection between that introductory narrative and the rest of the story. So it's almost as if that introductory discourse is a is a premise, and 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 that is why uh, plotting and 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 a closer attention to plotting uh, becomes. Uh, crucial to understanding some of the um, frameworks, um, the interpretative frameworks of um, fiction. And, and I, I chose uh, this particular um, uh, uh, foray, that is a, a foray into short fiction, because it becomes easier for us in, in some ways to, uh, um, for, to look at um, a fiction in its entirety uh, pretty quickly. And, and we can also go back to that story several times uh, in order to see how that um, story uh, world has been built, you know, brick by brick and and short stories give us that uh, luxury unlike a uh, uh, longer fiction where um, you know uh, it, it's kind of uh, practically not very um, feasible to go back time and again to that uh, universe which is a big universe a vast landscape with with lots of characters and and, and kind of understand them very very uh, closely and um, the other very interesting thing about um, short fiction is that, um, as I uh, uh, used to uh, inform the students over the lectures, that it, it gives us uh, glimpses, um, uh, you know, interesting glimpses into a particular um, a character or a set of characters' uh, lives, and and it becomes a. a an interesting puzzle somehow um, for us to uh, think about, work with, uh, in order to understand the motivations, the pressures, um, and 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 the desires of the central characters. So um, these glimpses are are um, what we have um, uh, about. Uh,
Okay, so uh, I want to uh, kind of um, bring out the uh, a difference um, uh, between uh, short fiction and long fiction in terms of um, in terms of the uh, messages um, that they uh, offer the readers, and 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 one kind of message is uh, that a long fiction offers is that uh, um, you know. Um, or subconsciously or, or unconsciously, it, it kind of informs the reader that uh, one can kind of totally, completely, uh, and fully um, understand uh, a, a great part of uh, 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 someone's lives. And that is uh, a kind of a comforting message. And that kind of comforting message is not offered by uh, short fiction because um, what we get in short fiction is, uh, as I said, uh, glimpses, uh, you know, slices of um, uh, meaning uh, into a particular set of characters and, and which is why um, these become very interesting puzzles. So if we go back to, uh, if we go back to the story, uh, The Shroud by uh, it, it's a good example to um, talk about in this regard. Uh, we, we get to see the world through uh, the perspectives of the central characters, Gizu and uh, Madhav, uh, and, and primarily because the narrators uh, follows, the narrator follows um, the, the thought processes and the philosophies and, and the fates of these two central characters. Um, and and uh, since we get to see uh, what they see, we, we do understand what their uh, motivations are and desires are and expectations out of life are, uh, but um, we don't know uh, what was the what was the worldview of, say, for example, Buddha, the character uh, whom we see uh, dying and dead um, uh, in, in the beginning of the story. And um, so we, we suddenly realize that um, uh, life is not a uh, life for everyone is not laid bare uh, for comprehension um, in, in a short story. So this particular family, what was her uh, daily routine like? Uh, uh, what was her connections with the uh, village? Um, uh, did she have any kind of support network to begin with? And did that support network gradually, um, you know, um, uh, peter out or, or gradually uh, get destroyed because of the uh, attitudes of the uh, father-in-law and um, the husband. So uh, there are lots of uh, mysteries um, in uh, the shroud, especially in relation to uh, uh, Buddha. And, and um, also we do not know what are uh, the what are the observations and, and, and the judgments of the rest of the villagers about um, these characters? We, we just get a few statements uh, from the narrator about um, the landlord and about, um, you know, the community um, in, in that uh, village and how they uh, come by uh, when Buddha is dead to offer some kind of uh, solace. But, but that scene seems almost empty because we do not know what has gone before and we will not know what what is to come so in 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 this regard um so we we just get a we just get to stop by and watch this episode uh in the lives of um gisu and madam and move away so uh Perhaps this is indicative of uh, the way life is led, um, uh, led uh, for um, in the way life is observed for many of us. We we get to see somebody, we get to see episodes of somebody's life, and then we move on. We somehow never get to see the full picture of somebody's life, and that's very very interesting, and and that makes um, life very interesting and significant as well. We cannot uh, make judgments because we do not know the full truth, and 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 is there a Truth. That's a, that's another question that um, to be answered another day. So uh, 
if we look at um, other stories, um, uh, for instance, um, we, 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 we can uh, talk about um, games at uh, twilight and, uh, and we get to just witness the happenings of one particular um, evening um, during summer. So uh, again, it's a brief uh, span of time for us um, to spend uh, with the characters in the story and we get to see the children's play and how one particular child is um, dissatisfied with the outcome of the game of hide and seek and what are the implications of that particular game for um, the larger meaning that the story has to offer and, and what kind of um, symbolic meanings are uh, invested in this uh, central character of uh, Ravi. So uh, if you look at the time span of, of these stories, um, usually short fiction um, uh, contains uh, um, or talks about uh, events and characters over a brief period of time. And, and, and that in itself, as I said, is very, very important. Uh, and, and that window into somebody's uh, life is like a is like getting a peek into somebody's uh, soul and 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 uh, we we as i said we enjoy that uh, interesting part of that uh, human soul and then walk away so um that uh, games at twilight has uh, resonances for uh, um you know characters who somehow um you know uh, kind of connect with a Ravi on a symbolic level. It could be, um, you know, the, the underdogs, the, the, the oppressed, the suppressed. Uh, it could be the socially um, exploited. Uh, it could be someone who occupies the lower rungs of a society. It could even um, be associated with um, the female uh, gender and its um, and, uh, and and the sufferings um, the the female of the sexes undergo in society. So uh, the 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 sufferings that Ravi undergo resonates with a lot of other characters. It could also talk about uh, the pressures of growing up, and and it can also suggest that um, the process of maturing, the process of growing up, uh, is is very very painful uh, for the for the individual, and and um, the message is that not all the time would that get, uh, individual get um, support and sympathy from those who are um, near and dear to that person. So um, the time span is also very interesting uh, in, in, in a story. For us. Um, again, it happens over a course of a couple of days. Um, and um, again, that brief um, span of time um, gives us a kind of a claustrophobic uh, effect uh, for the uh, readers um, and um, we are always uh, aware of the fact that uh, we need to get to some point uh, to see some kind of uh, resolution uh, happen for the central character. So um, again, uh, in terms of plotting, as I uh, mentioned in my uh, lectures, we, there is a kind of a, a, a mirror image um, in, in the case of In the Flood, uh, the mirror images being uh, Chenin's dog and Chenin and how uh, their lives um, uh, mirror each other, parallel each other. And in one story, we get a happy ending. And in another story, we get a tragic ending. And um, it, it's almost as if, um, you know, uh, but the Chenin's, um, dog's uh, life uh, is, is like, it's like a, it's like a thought experiment uh, and and um, you know what if what if um, Jenin didn't get the chance to escape uh, uh, in uh, from that massive flood um, the dog's fate would have been uh, Jenin's fate and and his um, family's fate and um, and and it talks about um, the responsibilities of um, the entire community towards um, you know, towards the underdogs the under privileged people who are vulnerable and and need support and succor um and 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 uh and, and, and tenderness and care from those who are in a position of power, who, who are in a position to offer all these comforts uh, during moments of crisis. So um, In the Flood also has a very, very interesting um, plot structure. And, and that plot structure talks about, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the implications um, for 
uh, 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 for different outcomes of a particular event. Uh, so we have two outcomes, and and um, you know, and and uh, each outcome has um, has implications for uh, how the world um, relates to um, the the the. Uh, the vulnerable, the vulnerable. Uh, if if the vulnerable is protected, what will be the outcome? If the vulnerable is not protected, what will be the outcome? And and that kind of thought experiment is done in in the flood. Um, in terms of uh, summer vacation, it's very episodic, uh, um, and um, the crisis in the story. Um, comes quite um you know uh, out of the blue um it, it comes from outside of that particular family and 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 um it makes um the central female uh child character and narrator uh stop um for a second and think about uh her place her position uh not only uh, within her grandmother's home but also within society so um Summer vacation is very, very um, episodic in that sense. It doesn't seem to have a neatly, tightly uh, plotted um, story, uh, the kind of story that um, Kushwin Singh would uh, perhaps uh, prefer. Uh, but um, uh, the episodic nature of summer vacation uh, tells us again uh, something about life itself, that life is not very tightly, neatly, uh, planned uh, project um, it's 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 more episodic uh, in that uh, regard and and um, things happen um, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, scope for accident there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, scope for um, plants changing at the last minute and and that is indicated in uh, in summer vacation um, so uh, the crisis uh, in in summer vacation is very interesting uh, because uh, the child uh, narrator Amu uh, realizes that life is not very very um, uh, simple. Life is not uh, black and white in terms of um, its its uh, rights and wrongs. Uh, there are gray areas, and um, she needs to be um, sensitized. Uh, she needs to be sensitive to all these uh, complexities of uh, life and um and the, and the interesting thing is uh we 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 are uh given that space to speculate uh about um Nani Emma's uh, behavior um, in, in, in the sense that um, we don't know whether she has been uh, stealing uh, within creation, stealing uh, the tamarind from um, the grandmother's house over a period of time or, or whether this is a one-off uh, which the little girl spots. And, and um, that in itself brings us um, to, that in itself brings us to uh, wonder about uh, the interesting character of uh, Mutashi. Um, so, uh, so summer vacation um, resolves, um, you know, uh, itself. Uh, the crisis seems to be something that's set apart, and then we have the life of the uh, central characters. Um, we have. Um, Hamu, uh, who is um, largely preoccupied with uh, uh, whether her grandmother is going to survive the next year or whether the grandmother is going to be around for the next year. So in that regard, um, it's very interesting. So let's have a brief uh, look at, um, can I have the page open? Yeah. Just a note. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, in summer vacation, um, the plotting is very, very uh, interesting because um, there's uh, the crisis with um, uh, Nani, Amma, and uh, we have um, Amu's uh, preoccupation with. Uh, Amu's worries about um, the grandmother's death. Uh, so this crisis doesn't seem to have anything to do with this one, uh, with this aspect of Amu's uh, life. And, um, you know, this crisis um, is somehow unresolved. And um, 
unresolved in a literal sense uh, because um, uh, because Amu doesn't know whether Naniam uh, came back um, to get the basket um, uh, which contained that uh, stolen tamarind, um, and and so uh, it, there was a kind of a, 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 a kind of a willful forgetting of the events um, with regard to Naniam, but. Um, uh, there is this larger preoccupation of Amu's worries that permeates the entire story. And that um, set of uh, worries is somehow um, somehow uh, resolved in the sense that we could, we get the reassurance from uh, reassurance from Amu's father uh, who who kind of tells her the grandmother was the grandmother will always be there um, as a kind of a perpetual uh, presence a perpetual presence and that's very comforting for the little girl so we have resolution in in this uh, trajectory whereas this um sub i, I would all uh, kind of uh like to call it the subplot with nani emma that is unresolved the main plot is resolved so summer vacation has a very very interesting uh, uh plotting uh, it's episodic plotting It's episodic plotting with uh, several concerns um, that are uh, that are touched upon, but not entirely uh, resolved. So, um, if we look at uh, Kabuliwala, um, uh, Kabuliwala is an is a is a very um, odd story in 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 that sense because once again. Um, just like in the Shroud story, uh, the narrator sticks, um, the first person narrator sticks to um, his own concerns about how he um, sees life with regard to his uh, daughter. So if we um, look at um, Minnie, uh, about whom the story is about, we do not get to hear her talk um in 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 a uh, uh, in a fuller manner as she grows up mini is talked about uh, in fact rather than you know, her talking in the story so that that tells us something very interesting uh it, it tells us something very interesting about the father figure in the um in the story because the father figure somehow dominates the scene To such an extent that um, we do not get to see the personality of many at all. Uh, so, uh, in in that regard, this uh, child figure Mini uh, resembles the other child, the child of Kabuliwala, uh, who is left behind in, in Afghanistan by um, this uh, trader, this uh, uh, dry fruit trader from from um, the terrain of, of Afghanistan. So the daughters, the female figures, um, the child figures are somehow absent um you know and and their absences are are projected uh, in, a, in a in a different way uh by uh, father figures and and <clears throat> that that's unique uh in in some sense because uh usually how um this story is uh seen is that uh it's it's uh it's admirable because we have a father who is terribly um affectionate towards a girl child in fact girl childs are not uh affectionately uh treated um by the traditional households and uh, therefore the fact that these fathers, um, the author figure, as well as the trader, um, uh, who are in love, uh, who are uh, uh, who are uh, adoring their um, uh, female uh, progeny, is is an admirable um, gesture. Is an admirable trait. So in that sense, um, the story is is uh, very positive. But um, there is a a kind of a negative side to such a um, adoring. Uh, relationship with with the daughter uh, the reason being um it suppresses the personality and the 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 identities of these uh, female um female children so in that regard um since we don't get to hear many talk we don't get to see many grow up we don't get to um see mm, 
many within the communities um, that she is part of. We, we somehow don't know many at all. See, she somehow becomes an object. An object um, of of um, the father, and um, that becomes uh, very very disturbing. And this object um, is uh, kind of uh, indicated, is symbolically um, indicated um, in 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 the picture that. The Kabuliwala carries with him uh, in his shirt pocket. So um, the, the child is not there, but only a very faint imprint of the child is there in that uh, charcoal imprint of the hand on a piece of paper that he carries. So, um, so we have absences uh, where we should have um, flesh and blood uh, creatures talking and playing and growing up with all their anxieties and preoccupations. So um, which is why when Minnie comes back at the end of the story, um, she once again um, uh, refuses to talk and, and, and the pressure is there on her uh, not to talk because a girl is not supposed to uh, converse with um, uh, older men, adult men who who are, um, you know, especially not on, on the day before uh, her uh, wedding. So uh, again, we have a, a lopsidedness here, uh, a lopsidedness that uh, a lopsidedness that uh, that that is part of uh, how people uh, look at others, um, and and the other here is. The other here is the girl, the girl child. In fact, the girl child uh, herself becomes um, the other for um, her own father. So uh, the father almost sees everything through um, his uh, preoccupations, uh, his uh, desires um, for the child, his motivations in, um, in, in, the, in the way he uh, wants to raise the uh, child. Um, so uh, so Kabuliwala, uh, in terms of its plotting, is again uh, uh, slightly um, uh, so it's slightly um, uh, um, mismatched or, or slightly lopsided in that in that sense because it's the first person uh, narrator's viewpoint and that first person's narrator's viewpoint is never the complete viewpoint uh, of a particular um, you know, character or a particular uh, uh, way of life because um, it becomes very very subjective um, and, and um, objectivity is, is uh, somehow lost when we have a third person narrator we can at least uh, um, understand that the narrator has a, a good grasp of uh, several uh, characters, several incidents um, of the past, um, of, of uh, what the future is going to be like. So um, in, in, when we have first person narrators, we know that that world building that the first person narrator does is somehow not um, complete. So. Uh, in Karma, uh, however, we do have a powerful uh, third person uh, narrator, and um, that third person narrator uh, knows quite a bit about the uh, past, um, ab about the past of um, the central character, the barrister. Um, and and uh, so um, the barrister who is uh, travel uh, who's about to travel uh, uh, who's about to travel by train. So um, in in that sense, we get a complete picture, uh, 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 more or less a complete picture of uh, the the desires and the motivations of the central characters there. Uh, however, we we just get as I said uh, a brief glimpse of um, Lakshmi. Um, uh, Lakshmi, the wife of um, the central character, uh, Sir Mohan Lal. So, um, in 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 that uh, sense, um, karma is 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 almost uh, a, a more complete story world in the sense that the consciousness of uh, Sir Mohan Lal um, and and its um, preoccupations, its desires, are is pretty uh, clear. Yeah, um, this is a very good question. What was Minnie's mother's reaction with Minnie's everyday meeting of the Kabaliwala? She didn't um, like that interaction. 
uh, happening between her young uh, daughter and the stranger from Afghanistan. Uh, it's a it's a, a reasonable response, uh, and uh, you're quite right uh, in the sense that she was being protective, and uh, she was being even overprotective because. The Kabali Wala is a stranger, and and this mother, uh, um, as we know from the story, is very very timid. Um, she is a person who is uh, frightened of um, anything and everything, from the creepy crawlies to uh, you know uh, natural um, uh, calamities uh, to uh, you know uh, strangers on the streets to European soldiers. So she is someone who is uh, terribly. Uh, frightened and um, and when she sees this big um, burly um, Afghanistan um, man of uh, you know with all those uh, uh, flowing uh, clothes and, and and a different outfit and and, uh, and and that big bag that he carries with him uh, as he uh, plies his tray so uh, she is um, not very very happy with that uh, meeting between the daughter and the kabaliwala because the kabaliwala is an other the, a, a different man and and she um argues with her husband and says that um slave trade is happening you know uh, in afghanistan there are um, people being kidnapped so um, it's not a place that's kind of uh, it, it's not paradise so you can't expect that man from that world to behave like a uh, like a normal ordinary person so um yes she she is over protect and um, what what the author here wants to do is to bring out the contrast between uh, Minnie's mother and and her father. That's the point here, actually, um, uh, behind um, such a, a characterization of. Minnie's father, uh, min, uh, such a characterization of Minnie's mother. So the point is that the father is very trusting for most of the time at least, and the mother is quite suspicious. So uh, it is, um, I, I believe it is the intention, uh, the subconscious intention even of Tagore to uh, paint a positive uh, uh, character trait of the father at the expense of the mother. Um, so that seems to be the intention here to make um, the mother not very, uh, you know, uh, not very uh, conducive to not very happy with the presence of the Kabaliwala uh, in in their big household, and we need to remember that this is a an aristocratic family, isn't it? So uh, it's an aristocratic family, and they, they live in a big house, and and suddenly to have this man, the stranger, uh, a, a trader, um, you know, a, a kind of a nomadic trader, spending time with the daughter, uh, and and that's not very welcome for Minnie's mother. Not at all. So uh, yes, that's that's a that's a good question. And and uh, as I said, there is a kind of a larger ideological agenda in in, in this uh, story. Perhaps not uh, not not very conscious on the part of Tagore, but uh, a kind of an unconscious uh, move, which somehow. Um, uh, which somehow uh, makes a big uh, um, a difference between the two genders here, the male, the fathers, versus the female, the mothers. Um, the mothers are suspicious, timid, um, and, and even the daughter as, as not being very loyal to the father as she grows up, because um, as we can uh, see from the story, the father almost finds fault with his own daughter for um, for. Uh, disregarding her um, older friends as she grows up into a young woman and and um and the father sees that as betrayal, um, you know, and, and and because she doesn't play anymore, because she doesn't spend any more time with her father or with her uh, old friends. So um, there is a move in the story that um, kind of reinforces um, the gender, um, the traditional stereotypical gender roles um, of of the uh, of the sexes uh, in this particular story, and. Um, uh, at the expense, as I said, at the expense of of the women figures in in Kabaliwala. So, uh, if we look at um, reflowering, 
um, Sundar Ramasamy's reflowering, we we get um, uh, similar um, you know uh, gender roles. We we have um, you know very few women characters. Um, that that story is dominated by uh, the male characters, uh, particularly the businessman and and Rauter and. Um, we always uh, see the female characters on the losing side. Uh, uh, we have um, a, a sort of a battle of uh, wills between the father and the mother at the beginning of the story. Uh, and, and even though the mother is the one who um, uh, patches up uh, the, the, the strained relationship between Appa and Rauder, that blind Muslim um, mathematical genius, um, she is... Um, not seen again in in the story she is sickly um she she rests for a, a lot of time and if we look at the other women characters in the story especially the women from uh Rauta's household um they're also uh, you know uh curtained in in a literal and a symbolic sense in in in, in yeah and and they always um uh, uh, oh, oh, they always demand the sympathy um, of of the people around them. So uh, when the house is uh, up for auction, they come uh, in a curtain cart and and they wail, uh, they cry uh, in front of that um, business house of of upper. And that's a very you know uh, interesting moment in the story. We have that business uh, being run um, on the merits uh, on the merits for a for a greater part of a router and we have his women you know women from his house right outside the business and they and they cry because the house is going to be taken away so um Again, uh, we, we see them as victims, we see them as passive, we see them as uh, somehow uh, not being uh, given their due. And, and um, the, the presence of the women in the narrative reflects uh, perhaps the status of women outside the narrative in reality as well. So um, that's also a very, very um, interesting uh, phenomenon that we need to um, we need to consider uh, when we read the story. So, um, so we, let's let's kind of sum up uh, the points that I have discussed so far. Uh, plotting is important to uh, help us understand um, the thematic concerns. That's one thing. The plot, uh, the way the story is plotted, um, also uh, tells us uh, which characters get importance and uh, which characters don't get um, which characters don't get the importance. So it's it's very very uh, simple and it becomes very um, almost formulaic if you uh, do this kind of um, uh, you know calculations. Uh, uh, so women become unimportant. If you look at the um, if you look at the time that they are given uh, in in uh, fiction, um, you know uh, that you, you kind of tend to see again the lopsidedness in terms of the power and influence that women um, you know, women uh, get uh, in, in in these stories, and somehow that seems to be reflective of how um, life is. Um, uh, so, uh, if, except for uh, summer vacation, except for summer vacation, and um, because as in some vacation we have a female uh, a narrator, uh, and and the the entire world is seen through the eyes of um, the, this child. And Mutashi's character is very very powerful. The grandmother's character is very powerful, right? Even though uh, even though um, this powerful character uh, begs um, a male character, uh, a son-in-law, to uh, resume his visits to this household in Kerala. So uh, e e even um, so, even this powerful character is made powerless at an at, um, at, at, at a, a important point in the story. And I don't know whether that's, again, conscious or, or subconscious or whether that reflects the reality of the lives of women. So this uh, powerful character, Mutashi, cries because um, the son-in-law is not visiting um, uh, the household, um, the mother-in-law's house, um, because of the death of, the, death of his wife. So we get um, to understand these things. So uh, gender, uh, gender 
issues um, are a major preoccupation of uh, Indian uh, fiction. And, and this is something we need to kind of be uh, observant of or, or be sensitive towards. Uh, so uh, if you look at the blue umbrella, again, we have um, a story where um, the preoccupations of uh, a little girl dominates that story. So we have Binya uh, and her umbrella as um, key characters uh, in the story. And uh, I mean, uh, if you look at it uh, from a, a very, very um, straightforward point of view, uh, we, we see that Binya is, is a kind of a savior in some sense, isn't she? Um, she, uh, she somehow rescues <clears throat> the rescues the soul, the soul of uh, um, the grandfather. Um, you know, we, we see the grandfather figure as being afflicted by envy, diseased by envy, and Binya's gesture of uh, giving back that umbrella um, somehow transforms. Uh, it's very trans. It affects a lot of transformation uh, in the life of um, the grandfather. And um, he's turned from a miserly character to someone who gives Binya a very expensive a silver chain with a bear claw attached to it. And that black bear claw is supposed to be uh, even, um, uh, even more uh, you know, uh, protective, even more uh, of a charm, even more of a powerful charm than the leopard's claw, uh, you know, which she traded to get the umbrella from one of the town's uh, women. So, uh, so in in that in that perspective, Binya is someone who is uh, who is somehow um, the the good spirit of the village. But uh, in another sense, uh, we we realize that. Um, uh, she is the loser um, ultimately because uh, she has to give up her precious, um, you know, uh, object, her favorite possession of the blue umbrella, uh, back to this rich old uh, grandfather, in order to make sure that life goes on peacefully without any, uh, without any kind of uh, complications for this most important figure of um, this uh, grandfather. And, and she feels guilty, doesn't she? She feels guilty because, um, uh, you know, his business is going down and the people are not, um, you know, um, patronizing his shop. And, and um, she realizes that this umbrella is the subversive element in the economy of their uh, hill village, and uh, she gives it back. So ultimately, even um, even though she plays the rescuer of the human spirit of of, uh, of the grandfather, she does um, lose um, this poor cultivator's farmer's daughter, and doesn't have the blue umbrella, the, the pretty blue umbrella. At the end of the story, and um, in fact, uh, we, in, in that context, we we can uh, um, remind ourselves of all the attitudes of the uh, villagers, especially um, the schoolmaster's wife, who. Mm, thinks that it's wrong for Binya to have such a beautiful umbrella. She's just an uneducated kid. How dare she have such a beautiful umbrella? And then we have the Temple Pujari who wants to, uh, you know, kind of assert his superiority by um, getting a multicolored uh, umbrella from Delhi, but he's unsuccessful. And everybody thinks that, you know, uh, you know, everybody at least hopes that this blue umbrella will bring a lot of ill luck um, for uh, Binya. And it seems to do that in some sense because um because uh, the grandfather thinks that you know um his loss uh, in business is owing to the presence of the uh, uh blue umbrella and his uh, greed uh, the tortures of greed that he suffers has um uh, the root cause in this particular blue umbrella so um somehow uh, you know it's a self fulfilling prophecy almost uh, that this blue umbrella is, is a sign of evil is a sign of discord and and it is kind of uh, taken away from benya and, and at the end of the story it becomes um the property of everybody which is a good thing but uh, but uh um you know it 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 was the uh, it was the 
property previously of Binya and, and that property gave her some kind of joy and identity and, and, and that, that, that's gone and, and she has nothing, no material possession at the end of the story. There's nothing between Binya and the blue skies and, and, and why and the question is why can't she have something beautiful what what's wrong with that so we need to ask um these questions uh, with regard to the blue umbrella so gender uh, especially the preoccupations of uh, women's uh, roles uh, their presence their identity uh, their influence um is 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 a major concern of um, Indian fiction. So if you look at um, other stories, um, for example, if you look at The Price of Bananas, we don't have a female character at all. Um, uh, in fact, under the monkey mother seems to um, fulfill that um, job description um, of, of um, uh, Female roles um, in in human society. So uh, so there is there is a lack of uh, women, interesting women characters, or um, you know influential women characters in in uh, the price of bananas, and that in itself is very uh, you know uh, significant. Why don't we have a, uh, even a single uh, female character in in that particular story? And uh, in fact, um, the fruit vendor and his attitude towards the monkey that has snatched away the cap of um, the businessman. Um, that attitude is very, very motherly, I would say. The fruit vendor's attitude. So here, um, we, we somehow see symbolic associations between uh, a lower class, um, poor character, and, and the nurturing, tender behavior of uh, mothers uh, which you know uh, mothers who who try to feed their young ones um you know at the, at the cost of their own comfort and 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 at the cost of their own uh, self satisfaction and fulfillment so um the absence of uh, female characters in the price of bananas is disturbing but there 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 is a kind of a symbolic presence of uh womanhood or or the nurturing character of uh of women uh, in in uh, done in a very symbolic fashion through the behavior of um the monkey mothers and the fruit vendors attitude uh and if you look at other characters in terms of gender uh we have um we have uh, uh games at twilight um where we have a mother figure of um who uh, in in some sense controls the children uh, up to a point and then she gives up on them and, and allows them to get their own way uh, for the sake of her own convenience and comfort and peace. Um, so this woman is from an upper class uh, household and uh, um, it's very interesting the way she is portrayed because we don't get the very um, you know nurturing, sympathetic uh, female uh, character in this particular mother in Games of Twilight, uh, and and that's kind of. Um, well discussed by me in that lecture uh, for that particular uh, story. So uh, even when Ravi is hurt and um, Ravi is hurt and affected by um, the, uh, the the attitudes of the other children, the mother in um, the game site Twilight is is very very unsympathetic, and uh, I, and that's that's very interesting because. Uh, because the mother sees the uh, the quality of the child, um, you know, the the mental state of the child as something not very um, admirable, not very attractive, because it, it's it's babyish. It's like a young child, and she wants her youngest son to grow up as quickly as possible and be, be a man. And, and being a man uh, is strong. And, and unlike being a woman, which is very weak and feminine, a woman is supposed to cry at the drop of a hat. So there are a set of expectations. There are a set of expectations as to um, a particular 
sexist attributes. And, and since Ravi doesn't fulfill that, um, the mother is not very sympathetic towards him. So um, Games at Twilight, we, we, do, we do have an unsympathetic mother. And, 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 and to have an unsympathetic mother uh, is, is very uh, interesting and not very common um, because a motherhood is supposed to be, uh, you know, all that is good and warm and, and you know, caring and tenderness itself. So, um, so it, through the pen of Anita Desai, we get a different, um, different uh, character uh, trait um, sketched by uh, sketched in this figure of uh, Ravi's mother. Uh, if we look at um, a horse and two goats, uh, we get a uh, we get this older. <clears throat> A female character, Muni's wife, who who is very powerful um, in in one sense because she has complete control over uh, Muni, who's who's aged, who's who needs care. So at this stage, um, she has become the more powerful one. So uh, again, that's very interesting. And um, but uh, the story is dominated, um, you know, uh, by uh, Muni for a greater part, and. Um, why is gender more serious matter to talk? Um, that's a that's a good question, uh, because <clears throat> we can see that um, the of the two genders, um, one gets a lot of attention, uh, whereas uh, the other doesn't get a lot of attention. So uh, you know, right off the bat, um, we we get to see the imbalance in the portrayal of the two genders. So uh, once we see the imbalance, uh, we uh, want to uh, look closely as to why there is such an imbalance um, in, in the representation of uh, gender uh, in, in, in Indian fiction. So um, that is why it's, it's, it's a serious matter to uh, uh, to talk about um, you know, about uh, gender. So, uh, further uh, reasons is this. Uh, I mean, uh, while one gender gets all the you know power and influence, and that is uh, represented uh, very effectively, powerfully, uh, interestingly, the other gender doesn't get um, such a representation, and uh, which is why. Gender becomes a big issue um, in in um, talking about uh, uh, literature and its concerns. So, if we look at um, a horse and two goats, uh, Muni's wife uh, was not very very uh, powerful to begin with. In fact, the narrator says that um, you know she was beaten uh, a few times uh, at the beginning of uh, their married life, and then as um, you know time passed. Uh, she became the more uh, powerful one, and because um, Muni has aged, and she in, and she is the only carer for Muni. And in fact, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Muni's wife is very successful uh, in and in, uh, in bringing food. Um, you know, on a, uh, in bringing food for her husband, she goes and grinds corn. You know, she she does um, the odd job in in the houses of. Um, the village and make sure that the husband gets a, a, a decent meal um, uh, uh, at least uh, of uh, some time. So um, the woman is a hard uh, a worker uh, in 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 a, a, a tale of two in a um, in a horse and two goat story as well as in the shroud uh, and and even in the shroud we we see that Buddha is the one who does quite a bit of work uh, and um, to make sure that these two uh, men's uh, stomachs are full uh, are full at the end of the day. So uh, we have the laborer, we have the laborer in the woman, we have Binya as a hard working girl. If you look closely at the story, she does a lot of work uh, and she doesn't go to school um, while the brother does, right? Um, so there's a great agenda disparity which should be uh, interesting to us, I believe. Um, I mean, the boy goes to school, the girl does, and the girl graces the cows, and the boy helps out when he is free. So, and the 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 um, schooling, the education of the little uh, female child is sacrificed for the sake of the boy, 
and um, there is gender disparity for us, you know, right there. And we have Buddha dying and dead, and we have the husband and the father-in-law enjoying a big meal outside the hut, um, the big meal in the sense that they're frying potatoes that they've stolen from somebody else's fields, and they are enjoying that meal, and they don't want to go and check in on the uh, woman because they're worried that the other person will eat the uh, potatoes. So we have a very, very bizarre, horrifying scene, and it is an exaggerated uh, representation of uh, humanity, but um, there it is. Um, so why do we have such psyches? Why do we have such representations? Why does Binya not go to school? Why does Binya's brother Biju go uh, to school? Why is the mother of Ravi not very sympathetic? Uh, why doesn't she want her child to um, behave like a grown up? You know, uh, So all these questions um, keep coming up irresistibly if you want to um, you really understand uh, how uh, Indian fiction uh, works um, in, uh, and, and, and um, addressing looking closely at uh, um, gender issues is one way to get a good grasp of uh, Indian uh, fiction um, in Indian literature. So thank you for uh, uh, watching and um, I hope it was interesting for you. Uh, good luck with the rest of the course. Okay. The, there's one question which has come up, um, which is, I want to do research on uh, Indian mythology, but I don't know where research is going to be sent from. Okay, um, this uh, question about Indian mythology is beyond the purview of my expertise. Um, I'm afraid you would have to ask um, a researcher or professor who is more experienced in uh, mythology and literature on mythology. This is um, short fiction and uh, I can only offer advice on how to read short fiction in Indian literature. Thank you. So, <coughs> So we just had a few.